Hey folks, Alex McMahon here of Evolve Nutritional Therapy. Today we're going to be continuing our series on food cravings and tackling the biggest subject out of fat, salt, and sugar, which is sugar. So because it's a pretty complicated subject and there's a lot of moving parts to it, this is actually going to be the very first out of a three-part video series I'm going to be doing on why you crave sugar. So from the evolutionary perspective, um, there's reasons that we crave all the things that we do crave in terms of salty foods, fatty foods, and sugary foods. And dense sources of sugar and carbohydrates are no different. There's a reason that we crave them. One of the biggest reasons is because when you would eat a food that would come from nature, um, if something tasted sweet, it would be a really good sign that this was a food that wasn't going to be poisonous and that it was safe to eat. So by tasting a food, having it be sweet, we would know immediately that it wasn't going to poison us or harm us. Another big thing to keep in mind is that from an evolutionary perspective, uh, gaining body fat for a period of time out of the year was a necessity. So because we would have famine during the winter where there would be very uh, scarce food availability, we would need times of abundance such as summer to overconsume things like carbohydrates and fruits and really gorge on them. Also, carbohydrates are the most effective form out of the macronutrients that help us to gain fat. So gaining that body fat for a period of time is actually a big advantage because it would allow us to survive through times of scarcity and it would also show to other people that were potential mates that we were a good option. If I could get fatter than somebody else in a quicker amount of time, I would show that not only am I able to provide for myself, but chances are pretty good I would be able to provide for them and I would also be able to provide for offspring. Something else to keep in mind is that a lot of the modern foods that we have right now are actually a far cry from what we started off eating when we got all of our foods from nature. So one of the big things is that our foods that we have now are very highly processed. So they have lots of chemical additives, preservatives, artificial sugars, and things like that that are added in. So it entirely changes the flavor profile of these foods that we would naturally have. These foods are also hyper palatable. So a lot of the times what people don't realize is that foods are actually having their flavors designed in a lab. So somebody in a lab coat is designing a specific flavor that will make it so that it somewhat hijacks the reward center of your brain. So one of the ways that we were encouraged from an evolutionary perspective to continue eating these very sweet foods was when you eat something sweet, it hits on the reward center of your brain and releases the feel-good hormones of dopamine and serotonin. So when we have these foods that are highly processed that come out of a lab somewhere, they're able to actually take advantage of that by making these foods so much sweeter than anything that we would have in nature that it actually forces us to overeat because it kind of hijacks that reward center that we have in our brain. Another problem is that these foods are very calorically rich but very nutrient poor. So we have a really smart signaling system set up in our body between our brain and our gut. And our gut signals to our brain when we're full and well nourished and to turn off hunger. A problem arises though when we never get that signal sent from our gut to our brain. So you're physically full, but nutritionally, you're somewhat starving. So that's the very first out of this three-part series on sugar cravings. If you would like to connect with me, you can find me on Instagram at Evolve Nutritional Therapy, Twitter at Evolve NT PDX, or you can email me at EvolveNT PDX at gmail.com. Take care, and I will talk to you soon.